Hey friends, welcome back to the UFD Tech Channel. Wait, no, this intro sucks. Restarting. Hey friends, welcome back to the UFD Tech Channel. I'm sure you had a great weekend. We're looking at the Ryzen 3000 and Navi launches happening on a Saturday. It's prolific, it's legendary. Does it beat the 9900K? Does Navi actually make sense? There was a price drop right before launch. Are they doing it because they were planning on doing it all along? Are they just co coalitioning with NVIDIA to get the consumers? There's a lot of answers that we need. So let's go ahead and talk about all of that. I'm gonna distill all of the Ryzen content for you in the next few minutes after I tell you about today's video sponsor, iFixit. Whether you're building a Ryzen 3000 system or something else for your computer, it always helps to have a good electronics toolkit at your disposal. You've got the Essentials Electronic Toolkit, Protect Toolkit. iFixit has a bunch of different toolkits that you can use for building PCs or repairing PCs, and they also have plenty of repair guides on their websites. And not only that, if you break something like your phone, they have spare parts there too. So go to ifixit.com forward slash UFD Tech and go to the place you need to go to actually fix your crap. Okay, do it. Or if you're trying to build something, I can't highly recommend their ProTech toolkit out enough. It's got everything you need. It has tweezers, has an electrostatic wristband, not, not verge tweezers, real tweezers. And then it also has like all of the bits and bobs that you need for any repair that you might need to do. So check them out at the link in the video description. Okay, my friends, I have spent the past day or so just digesting all of the content that I could on Ryzen 3000 in Navi, primarily because there was zero chance I was gonna get a review out for you guys on the new stuff, because when I contacted my rep for AMD in South Africa, they said that AMD doesn't care about South Africa and they have zero review samples for us, even though I'm the largest tech channel here, they just don't, they don't freaking care. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. So no, no Navi samples and to ice the cake on this one, it doesn't look like retail samples are coming in until next week late next week. So unlike other reviewers in the United States who weren't randomly selected by AMD to get stuff, they could just, you know, go to Micro Center and buy it. I have to wait a while to get my stuff. But what I wanted to do was to freaking read and listen and watch every single bit of content I could on the Ryzen 3000 launch and Navi launch <laughs> to distill it in one of the most concise formats that I possibly could to give you an indication of what's actually happening with this launch. Not dirty specifics, but actually really good general overview to inform you on your choice for this new set of GPUs and CPUs that has actually come out. What I have found in all of my research is that AMD took a really interesting approach with this. It doesn't look like they gave out any samples of the Ryzen 7 3800X. I could not find a single review on it out at this point. Obviously, obviously if somebody picks it up at retail and then reviews it, it like then they could have it out. But for all intents and purposes, 3800X, AMD's not promoting that. And then on top of that, it also looks like the Ryzen 5 3600 and 3600X were neglected by AMD, although there is some good information out there on those. So let's go ahead and start off with the general overview when it comes to Ryzen 3000. Is it as good as AMD is saying it is? In most cases, actually, yes. Their, their IPC improve, no, their IPC improve, I'm trying to say performance and the word improvement's coming out of my mouth. Their IPC performance is actually better than the 9900K when you go against them clock for clock. Four gigahertz, Ryzen 3000 versus four gigahertz, 9900K. AMD is actually beating Intel quite handedly. However, that doesn't mean that AMD actually wins in gaming scenarios because one, there's still issues with the latency between the chiplet and the IO die. So they're not getting as good of a performance as you would expect. And then two, obviously Intel can clock higher. So even though it's losing performance per clock, it's actually winning the overall game. So the general consensus is no matter what Ryzen chip you buy, the 9900K is still the best gaming CPU that's out on the market, both in stock. And then also once you get a 5.1 to 5.2 gigahertz overclock, which most of the 9900K chips can do. And then on top of that, the 9700K and 9600 case still make really compelling arguments for themselves when it comes to gaming if you overclock the CPUs. At 5.1 gigahertz, it looks like the 9700K and 9600K are better gaming chips for everybody. That's the basic consensus. If you're looking for pure gaming, Intel actually is still the way to go. You cannot beat 
the 9900K when it comes to gaming. However, there are some key advantages that are coming with Ryzen that make them a much better choice based on value, but then overall performance of your system. If you look at the reviews of the Ryzen 5 3600, it is the duh chip. This is the chip you should pick up if you're building a $700 to $1,000 system. There's no better cost alternative because even at $200, you're not having any Intel chip that can compete with it. And it's closest competitor to the i5-9600K, that's at $235. So you're saving $35, you get a cooler with it, you can overclock it, and then it's actually really good in video games. It's also really good when it comes to streaming. It's also really good when it comes to just general work load tasks. AMD has made some really good improvements and the Ryzen 5 3600 at $200 looks as the king chip that everybody should consider if they're just building a generic system. But it's clear from the performance that we're seeing in gaming for the 3700X why AMD didn't have any review samples of the 3800X. It is an overclockable version of a, this is a great chip, but it's not gonna give you any better value. AMD is really trying to push the value perspective. The 3700X makes a ton of sense at the $330 price point, more so than anything AMD Intel has. The 9700K just Yes, you'll get better gaming performance, but you're gonna lose on your system overall. And then with the 3900X, it is again the same scenario. You're gonna lose on gaming performance, but you're gonna have a much better system overall at the same $500 price point with 50% more cores. So you're gonna do a lot better in things like content creation for Premiere, DaVinci Resolve, for Photoshop. The 3900X makes a whole lot more sense. And then also in things like streaming. And if I could just plug another content creator right now, somebody that you should go and check out right now when it comes to anything regarding live streaming or content creation, check out Epost Vox. He needs you guys to go over there and watch his videos. He has a criminally low view count on something that is incredibly helpful and super in-depth when it comes to his Ryzen 3000 testing on everything, including H.264 and H.265 encoding. Go watch his stuff. One of the best tests that Epost Vox did with his videos that he had out was testing a 3900X on a $50 B450 Tomahawk and showing that the performance is actually really close to being the same. So even if you're gonna spend $500 on a CPU, thanks to AMD's promises of supporting the AIM4 platform, you actually probably could get away with not spending two to $400 on a motherboard and still be all right when it comes to stock performance on the 3900X. So general conclusion, Ryzen 3000, absolutely worth buying. AMD underpromised in certain areas and over-delivered, especially when it comes to IPC. However, gaming performance isn't quite what they led, it, led us to believe. It's not on par with the 9900K in everything, but it is still a good uplift over Ryzen 2000, even if it's not the best. It's definitely worth buying. All of the chips look to be a really good value and really worth picking up. Now, let's go ahead and talk about Navi because those are more interesting. AMD obviously dropped the price by about $50 for both of the cards when on, what was it, Friday, Saturday? And then they launched on Sunday. And at the price point of $400 for the 5700 XT and $350 for the 5700, they both make a lot of sense, especially when you look at hardware and box performance per dollar slides, which you should definitely go check out their videos. Also check out their Patreon page to get more information and potentially even support them, what we can see is that at current new prices at MSRP, the 5700 and 5700 XT have the best performance per dollar out of any card that's on the market. However, when you look at sale prices, the RX 590 and Vega 56 actually beat those two cards because they're much uh, cheaper. The $270 for a Vega 56 is insane considering the performance you have. But new card pricing at new S MSRP, 5700 and 5700 XT make the most sense to pick up if you're concerned with value because the 5700 XT is basically on par and mostly better than the 2060 Super, even though it's uh, the same price. And then the 5700 is supremely better than the RTX 2060 at the same price and can kind of match the 2060 Super in some games. And then it also looks like there's some like good performance uplift from the Navi architecture in like one or two games. Forza Horizon 4 is the only game that I saw where the Navi cards are just absolutely ridiculous. So if you play Forza, pick up the 5700 XT. It's gonna be the card that you want. However, there are certain issues that come with the new Navi cards, including the fact that AMD has chosen yet again to go with blower style coolers. The things are hot and loud and stupid. 
Okay, it, it probably would be worth waiting a couple months to pick up an AIB partner card with a custom cooler in order to get better thermal performance and better noise reduction because freaking apparently they sound like blower, blower matrons, blow the leaf blowers. However, again, there are some key areas of performance that are introduced in Navi, which again, you should check out Vox for, but basically things such as content creation and live streaming, the Navi cards are really crazily good, like beating the 2080 Ti in scenarios that you wouldn't expect them to. And then on top of that, AMD has also introduced content aware sharpening for like upscaling video games. And that is also amazingly good, surprisingly better than deep learning super sampling from Nvidia. So so you should check out that content to learn more. I'm gonna leave all of the links in the video description as well as up there. But like the, the upscaling that AMD is presenting here is actually quite good, even though Nvidia was mocked for being blurry from their downscaling, upscaling crap that they're doing with their tensor cores. AMD seems to have gotten something right with content aware scaling, and it actually is supposed to be pretty good. It, in fact, not noticeable 4K like actual 4K quality versus upscaled 4K quality from 1440p. So take that for what it's worth, but AMD seems to have introduced some really good features when it comes to Navi in these cards. So the basic consensus at the end of all of this is that both Ryzen 3000 and Navi are actual things that are worth buying. Picking up a 3600 is a no-brainer. Picking up a, an RX 5700 or 5700 XT if you're concerned about value at all, if you have $350, don't even consider the RTX 2060. It's stupid at this point. The 5700 makes the most sense. The only downside is the freaking stupid drivers. Apparently there are tons of driver issues currently and AMD eventually fixes those. And then also the blower style reference coolers suck not in a good way. So if you're planning on liquid cooling them, go get those. But if you're not, maybe just wait a little bit till custom cards come out. But in terms of value, AMD still reigns supreme. They're actually beating Intel when it comes to IPC. They're actually beating Intel when it comes to the overall performance. If you consider the 3900X having 12 cores and 24 threads at the same price, they're giving you way more value. And it's just, they are giving you something that is going to suit your system for a long time to come. And even if you're rocking a B450, you could probably upgrade to the latest generation of Ryzen 3000 and be satisfied. And Navi actually has some key architectural improvements that we probably don't realize the full grasp of just yet. And we'll see more of when new drivers and new game impl implementations come out for them. So overall, it looks like this launch is a 100% win for AMD. There doesn't look to be a bad, like release in all of this. All of them make sense to buy at their price points. Obviously some of them are better values at that. So that's it. That's what I got from distilling six hours of videos plus all of the articles I could find. AMD has won with this new launch. You should definitely consider picking them up. We've left all of the links in the video description to all the resources that I conglomerated for this, but it looks like AMD is pretty strong on this one. So let me know what you think. Have you guys been experiencing the same reception to Ryzen as what I've perceived? Have you been able to pick one up at retail? It looked like Newegg and Micro Center were the only places in the US that have them. It looks like other countries also also aren't having them in retail kind of like we are. It half looks like a paper launch, like they had limited stock, kind of like what happened with Vega, where they just were like, here, this is what we have, wait a month to get more. We'll have to see. But at, at the point, it looks like everybody and their grandmother might be going out to buy them. So let me know, are you picking them up? Also, hit the like button. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Again, don't forget to check out all of the people that we mentioned, Epos Vox, Hardware Unboxed, there's Gamers Nexus, there's Paul's Hardware, Bitwig, like you guys know all of the main staples. And then also, Debauer, check him out. He un, uh, he delitted a Ryzen 3000 processor, and he also did liquid nitrogen testing so that you could see the thermal performance versus uh, increased frequency. So check all of that out, description. And don't forget about today's video sponsor, iFixit. Check out their repair guides, their toolkits, their actual spare parts at ifixit.com forward slash UFD tech. Anyways, that's the end of this video. I'm Brett with the UFD tech channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you smiling faces again in the next video. I love you too. Bye.